Get ready to nerd out. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to dive deep into your YouTube analytics and evaluate the long-term performance with a very data-driven, objective approach. This is something I do with clients when I'm managing their channel or sometimes people will hire me just to perform a channel audit. I'm gonna show you all the steps I go through and all the calculations that I make, whether we're doing a basic evaluation or maybe you have a channel where one video is performing so much better than the rest and it's really skewing your metrics. I'm going to show you how to evaluate that kind of channel. I'm also going to show you how to evaluate a very tiny channel, which is a little bit more challenging. And I'm even going to show you how to interpret this data into actionable recommendations. All right, guys, let's just dive right in. So let's start the evaluation. I always like to look at the data in 90 day increments year over year. What that means is that I'm looking at the past 90 days going backward from today, and then not the 90 days before that, but the same 90 days last year. This is really important because you wanna be making sure that you're making apples to apples comparisons and things like holiday schedules, school schedules, and even weather patterns can affect viewing habits on YouTube overall. So you wanna make sure that you're evaluating evaluating the same time of year in your comparisons. So let's take a look at our spreadsheet here. On the left-hand column, I have the metric I'm measuring. Then in the second column, I have this year, and then the next one is last year. And then we're gonna calculate the percentage change so we can get a really clear snapshot about any changes in performance. So the first metric I'm going to measure is published videos. How many videos were published in this time frame? Super important metric, but I'm actually gonna skip this one and you'll see why in a second. We're going to instead start with views. So this channel here doesn't really do a lot of shorts content. So I'm going to start by selecting analytics in the sidebar and selecting the views tab here. And then I'm going to hit this button here that says see more. On this measurement here, we're gonna drop down and change it to the last 90 days. And then I'm going to select compare to and select this option year over year. This is going to measure for us the previous 90 days of this year and the same time frame of last year. So if we look at the top of this screen, we can see the exact date ranges that are being measured for these time frames. And I want to take note of these. This is going to be important when we count up how many videos we published in this time frame. So for 2024, we're measuring April 10th through July 8th. And for 2023, we're measuring through July 9th. So we just want to make note of that. Okay, now let's look at our overall views. So on this column, I can see my total number of views for 2024. So I'm going to copy that figure and paste it under the views field in my spreadsheet. And then on this side is the previous year. And so I'm going to type that in here. Now let's count up how many videos were published in those time frames. So YouTube doesn't make this really easy to spot in YouTube Studio. So we're actually going to have to count, which is why I measured the views metrics first, because now I can see the date ranges that I should be paying attention to when I'm counting how many videos were published. So to do this, we're just going to head on over to content in YouTube Studio. And what I'm going to do here is count however many videos were published in this time frame for this past year. So one way to do this is just to keep clicking the boxes of each of these videos all the way back through April 10th. Okay, so I've selected 10 videos. So in my spreadsheet, I'm going to punch in 10. And by the way, guys, one other thing I wanna mention as we go through this process is that if you are auditing your own YouTube channel, just make sure you're in the right headspace. I know that analytics and looking at data can be kind of depressing if you're not moving in the direction you wanted to. So just make sure that you're in the right headspace to look at that data in case you don't like what you see. So now we need to go back in time, still in this content tab, to find the videos that were published in our 2023 timeframe, which is April 11th through July 9th. So I'm just gonna go back here and again, I'm just gonna click these boxes so I don't have to actually count. I'm just getting my result here in this black bar and I'm clicking anything that fell between that time frame. I'm gonna skip this one here because it's an unlisted video. And you'll see that we have the exact same number of videos year over year. So I'm gonna punch in 10 here. All right, now let's measure our next metric, which is the subscribers. Let's go back to analytics. And here I'm going to hit subscribers and I'm going to change my time frame again to last 90 days. And then we're going to hit see more. And then again, compare to year over year and type in those values. Next, let's measure impressions. So I'm going to close out of here. And then in the analytics tab, we're going to head on over to content. 
And here we can see our impressions. So I'm going to select that tab, change my measurement to 90 days, see more and do the comparison. Let's close out of this and select the click through rate, see more, make our comparison and enter in these values. Okay, the next metric we wanna check is how many viewers are returning. So let's head on over to the audience tab and make that comparison. Okay, now I wanna measure where the traffic is coming from. So I've got a whole separate section here on this spreadsheet for the different traffic sources. Let's go back to views, set our metric to 90 days and hit see more. Now I'm going to select in this top row here, traffic source. And then I'm going to hit compare to and do my year over year comparison. So one thing to notice about this page is that it's going to list your traffic sources in order of popularity. So the order in which the traffic sources are listed is in a different order from year over year. So just make sure that you're plugging in the proper numbers here. And you can pick whichever metrics are most important to you. I'm gonna include end screens because on this channel, we've been making a concerted effort to increase the click through rates on our end screens. So I wanna measure whether or not it's working. In this last one here, I've broken out in Google search. Obviously Google search is an external traffic source. So we're gonna have to drill down a little bit deeper to find how many views are coming from Google search. So I'm just going to click external on this screen and it's going to show me where all these traffic sources are coming from. A lot of these are such random little hits. It's really the Google search I'm interested in. So we've got all of our figures plugged in and you can clearly see where we're growing, where we're shrinking, but I like to translate these figures into percentages because I think it really helps me wrap my head around how this channel is performing year over year. Now I know you can program your Excel spreadsheet to do this for you automatically, but I'm gonna show you how to do it manually in case you don't know how to do that in Excel. So all you need to do is grab your calculator and what you're going to do is type in your value for 2024 in a given metric. So let's start with views. So I'm going to type in 462213 and then I'm going to subtract 2023's number. So 393130 and then I'm going to divide this number by the 2023 metric. So I'm going to hit divided by and again 393130. And then I'm gonna get this fractional number here and I'm gonna round to the second decimal. So this is telling me we had an 18% increase in views year over year. Now you may end up with a negative number when you do this and that's okay. That just means that that metric shrank year over year. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill out the rest of these fields using that same calculation. So I've got all my values plugged in here under the percentage change column. If a number is red, that means it's a negative number. So we actually shrank there. So let's take a look at the health of this channel. What this data is telling me is that this channel is really making some significant gains year over year, particularly in the number of subs gained and the number of viewers who are returning to consume more of this content. I've also noticed that the click through rate has gone up. I'm going to interpret that as some improvements we've made to thumbnails on this channel. And I'm also noticing huge gains on the end screens as a traffic source. That means that the work we've been doing to promote our end screens definitely is working. So I love to see this where we're really falling off is under under suggested videos. And I have to say, in my experience, it's really hard to move that metric. If your video gets suggested by YouTube behind another more popular video, that's kind of just like a lucky thing. And so it's really hard to control and aim for that. But I do see that some of the efforts we're making in optimizing our videos are definitely working. Clearly the Google search on these videos is up and YouTube search is also up, just obviously not quite as much. So I would look at this data and say that this is a great story for this channel. There's definitely consistent growth year over year. And so I would advise that this channel just kind of keep doing what they're doing, always trying to improve their content and skills, but they're definitely on the right track. Now, in addition to looking at these metrics, when I'm doing a basic evaluation, I also like to look at this graph, the number of new viewers versus returning viewers, a really healthy channel. will have a graph that looks like this, where there's a good mix of new and returning viewers. 
What's not great to see is a graph that looks like this, where it's a lot of new viewers and not that many returning viewers. What this signifies to me is that there's too much of an emphasis on getting traffic from search. So people are searching for one specific topic, finding one video and watching it, but not subscribing and not returning to watch more content from that channel. Another thing I like to look at, which videos are generating subscribers. When someone subscribes to a channel, that means they like that particular content they're consuming at that moment and they would like to see more of it. So that can give you some hints as to what type of content you should be creating. And another graph I like to look at is lifetime views, but under the content tab here, where I can section out just long form videos because shorts content can really skew your metrics. So if you're traditionally a long form content channel, I just want to look at my long form videos. And this is the graph for this channel you're watching. You can see I had a lot of growth during COVID and then that growth definitely trailed off. It was a very sad time in my life, but we're climbing back up the mountain again. And I attribute that to a few small changes I have made on this channel. I'm going to be making a video all about that very soon. So if you want to see that, make sure you hit the subscribe button. All right. But what if your channel has an outlier video, something that is performing exceedingly well in sort of dwarfing the metrics on the rest of your videos? It can be really hard to understand the health of a channel when you have an outlier video that is performing so much better than the rest. I find that this is very common with a lot of channels. Let me show you how I audit a channel with that. Okay, so I've got my next spreadsheet here. And what I've done is pretty much those exact same calculations for this other channel overall. Now, if we look at this data, here's what sticks out to me. The views have only gone up 6% and that's not really great news because over the year they've published many, many more videos. Why have the views only gone up 6% because the old videos should still be performing. So to me, that's not a great metric. That's kind of disappointing as is especially the reduction in impressions and in suggested as a traffic source. What a huge crash that they had there. And then I'm also seeing a huge gain in Google search. Now these are some pretty wide swings on this channel, which makes me think that that one outlier video that has been cranking out views for this channel for years, may be skewing these statistics. So what I like to do is do the overall channel analysis like you saw us do, but then I also like to do the same analysis for that one specific video. So we can compare how this video is performing compared to the entire channel. This video didn't get any end screen traffic, so I'm just going to skip that metric altogether. And of course, let's do our percentage check. And another important metric to look at is what percentage of views overall are from this one particular video. So I'm going to copy the views metrics from the channel overall and the outlier video. And then the calculation we need to make here is to take the 2023 value so 17093 and divide it by the 2024 value. So 66858. So this value here is telling me what percentage of the total overall views were from that one specific video. And again, we're going to round to the second decimals. So 26% of total views were from just this outlier video in 2024. Now let's calculate the 2023 percentage and a staggering 39% of views came from that one video in 2023. This just shows that the rest of the videos on this channel are growing, even as this one is declining. So here's what I see when I compare this one outlier video to the channel overall. Clearly this outlier video is dropping in popularity on YouTube. The views are down 31%. And so now that we look at the channel overall, you can see that having a positive 6% gain in views doesn't seem that discouraging because the views on this one outlier video are so dramatically down. What else I notice is the huge decrease in suggested traffic on this video, which accounts for this huge drop in suggest on the channel overall. So if you looked at this channel and just looked at views overall over, let's say a couple of years, you probably would be seeing a downward trend in views, but clearly that doesn't tell you the whole story. When you break out an outlier video like this way and analyze it and compare it to the channel overall, you might see a different story and things aren't as bleak as they seem. But what if you have a tiny channel where you can't even do a year over year comparison? Let me show you how I would analyze a channel like that. It's a lot less data driven a little bit more holistic looking at the channel overall. 
So here's a small channel. I like to look at the channel over its entire lifetime when it has very little data to pull from. So what I first like to do is analyze the most popular video on the channel. And then I like to expand the view on that particular video and look at where the traffic is coming from. So on this particular video, a lot of the traffic came from suggested. And then I look to look down and see what content is suggesting this video. This could give me an idea of what other types of videos this channel should be making because this seems to be where the audience is. Let's go back to that lifetime view. And one other thing I'll notice about this particular channel is that while that one video was its most popular, it actually gained the most subscribers from a different video. So let's take a look at that. Now this video has a fraction of the views as this channel's most popular video. However, it has gained far more subs, not a lot of subs because it's a small channel, but a significant amount. What does this tell me? When someone subscribes to your YouTube channel, what they're telling you is I like this content and I would like to see more of this from you. The other thing I notice about this particular video, and I'm gonna blur out the thumbnail, but hopefully you can see a little what this thumbnail looks like. It has really bold text. It clearly tells me what this video is about and it shows someone's face as opposed to the most popular video on this channel, which is a very far away shot of a landscape. So to me, even though that other video has more views, this particular video stands out to me because it is clearly more successful in growing this audience on this particular channel. I think this channel should make every thumbnail look like this one. It's definitely grabbing new viewers and we can see that viewers are finding this video through browse and search as opposed to suggest, which we already talked about is kind of a nebulous metric. It's really hard to be strategic in getting suggested by YouTube. It's something that kind of happens by luck. I think your efforts are better spent optimizing your videos on the back end when you publish them and really thinking about those thumbnails to increase those click through rates. And clearly this video is benefiting from that kind of work. So remember, you can't grow your channel without understanding the data behind the YouTube studio metrics. Thank you so much for hanging out. If you like this video, you guys, let me know. Give me that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. I picked out some more videos to help you grow your YouTube channel and I'll see you again.